Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to be working in Maya 2018 and we're going to be creating mountain terrain. Okay, let's jump in. Here we go. Right guys, we're in Maya 2018 as you can see and uh, I received a lot of questions about environment modeling. Okay, so I decided to do this video on how to create a mountain terrain and uh, that said, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to go to our uh, modeling tab. We're going to create a polygon plane. And we're going to hit R and we're going to scale that up until we roughly have the size of our grid here. Now, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to use a displacement map, meaning that we're going to project a, a displacement map on this plane uh, to create our um, mountain terrain, meaning that this uh, plane here has to have a very high um, poly count. Okay, so we're going to hit Control A to open up the attribute editor, and we're going to go to the polyplane one tab. And instead of having 10 by 10 subdivisions, we're going to bump that way up to 1,000. Okay, so 1,000 here as well. Yeah, very high, that's fine. Um, if your system cannot do that because it's a bit too much, you need to lower that, obviously. But, you know, if you can, try and do 1,000 by 1,000, all right? Okay, so now that we have that, what we need to do is go to the sculpting menu. And basically, we're going to use a brush. So we're going to take this guy all the way on the left and uh, we're going to use a brush and we're going to use a, a stamp that we need to download which is the displacement map okay but before we do that when i move my mouse over the grid or over the uh, the plane here you see it turns into a circle and by holding down b and left click and dragging you can make that bigger or smaller like this okay so let's double click on our uh, tool here on the left we're going to double click on that i'm just going to bring that in here and there are a couple of things here that we can do. We can uh, go in, we can change uh, the size uh, of our uh, brush. So we can go down, make it smaller, we can go up. There you go. The strength, um, you can do that as well. So if I were to sculpt on this, you see that effect. If I bump up that strength, it'd do much more than that. Let's hit Control Z to go back. We don't want any of that. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this stamp function down here and that's going to be for our displacement map right so let's get that first so we're going to jump to google and there we are and let's just type in mountain displacement map and there you go now we're going to go to images and we're looking for an image that is black and white and we need to kind of choose which one we want to use so let's see what we've got here this looks uh, pretty cool, so we're going to use this. We're going to right click and go to save image as, and we'll just save that on our desktop here. And that's what we're going to use. Okay. Now uh, let's jump back into Maya. There we are. And we're going to go to our stamp here, use stamp. We're going to click on import and we're going to go to our desktop and I'm going to select this guy right there. So that's now loaded. And now we're going to take our brush and we're going to pull that up. Um, I need to do that once, but you can already see the effect here. Okay. Let me just uh, turn on ambient occlusion so you can see it better. Let's just hit Control Z and go back. And there we go. And I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion and then we're going to put our mouse in the middle here and we're going to pull that up once and let go okay now let's see that looks fine by me it's actually very nice and what we'll do is we'll go in i'll just uh, minimize this guy and i'll put in a quick light source so you can see what's going on we're going to go to let's do a sky dim light all right pretty awesome terrain right now, the thing is, this is uh, way too high poly to be uh, practical. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this guy. And we're going to go up to uh, edit, delete by type history. And then we're going to go to uh, file. We're going to export selection. And let's call this mountain high poly OBJ, right? So we're going to export that as an OBJ to a desktop. There we go. And then we're going to go in to um, ZBrush. All right, guys, here we are. So we're going to go to uh, import. We're going to go to our desktop. We're going to select our mountain high poly. 
we're going to load that in. Let's give it a sec. Like I said, it's quite high poly. Left click and drag. Hold down shift. There you go. I'm going to click edit. I'm going to click uh, make poly mesh 3D. And we're ready to rock and roll. There you have it. Okay. Now I'm going to hit P on my keyboard to get the perspective view so it doesn't look that weird. And there you go. And this is going to be our high poly. All right. So I'm going to go to my sub tool here. You can see this is our high poly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this guy. I'm just going to turn the little view eye thingy off right there. And then I'm going to rename this guy and we'll call this one low poly. All right. Now it's not actually low poly just yet, but we have it selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, geometry. Hang on. And we're going to go to our Z remesher right there. Now let's start somewhere around the range of four. Okay, we're simply going to hit remesher and I'm going to make sure this guy is turned on. This might take a while. And there you go. This is our uh, low poly. I'll just uh, make sure we can see the poly count. This is a pretty low poly and kind of depending on what you want, you can go up or down. So let's see, we're at 7,000. We can uh, bump it up a little bit. So let's do maybe somewhere around six. Okay, we'll uh, give that another go. All right. And let's see if that is, oops, not sculpting that. Let's see if we can live with that. I think when we project our high poly on this guy, we're good. Okay, so it's 7,000 for a complete environment. It's not too bad. So we have that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our Z plugin. We're gonna go to our UV master, and I'm gonna unwrap all to make sure that this is UV. We're gonna go to UV plugin again, uh, flatten it so we can see, and that's not a surprise. All right, go back and unflatten, and then we're gonna export these guys, okay? So we're gonna go back to our uh, subtool here. Now, first I'm gonna take my low poly and I'm gonna go to uh, export and we'll just call this mountain low poly as an OBJ. Save that. We're gonna go to our high poly here. I'm gonna go to export mountain high poly. Yep, fine. Save that out. And now that we have these two, a high poly and a low poly that's UV'd, we can go into Substance Painter. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, here we are. So we're going to go to File. We're going to go to New. And I'm going to leave this at PBR Metal Rough. I'm going to select my low poly. And there it is. Uh, let's see, we'll set map size to uh, 4K. I'm gonna hit OK right here. And there you have our low poly, like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, we're gonna bake textures. So we're gonna click on this guy. We're gonna go in and hit this little button right there so we can open that up and load our high poly for the bake. This one right there. And we're gonna set that map size to 4K as well. Okay, all looks good. So we're gonna bake the initial sets. Now I'm just gonna turn this ID off so we'll get less errors during the bake, but here we go. Well, there you have it guys. I think it turned out quite well. Let's just not paint on that. There we go. And as you can see, it turned out perfect. So uh, this is a quick and easy way to create a uh, terrain uh, without too much hassle and make it look very realistic. OK, so uh, that's it, guys. Hopefully it was helpful. If you got any questions, as always, let me know. And thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.